maybe into your other study looking at the next generation sequencing in advanced uh, urothelial cancers, and maybe you can tell us a little bit about what you found in that study and the actionable uh, mutations um, and anything specific that you think is important from that perspective. Absolutely, and I totally agree with you, John, that we don't have a good translation sometimes between what mm -hmm. happens in the genome level and the protein function level. Mm -hmm. But we try to get in the uh, genomic interrogation and, and protein interrogation through different studies, and we work with different uh, vendors, and specifically in this study we work with foundation, one, to look at particular tumor tissue analysis and do genomic sequencing in patients who have bladder cancer and also urethral cancers. Mm -hmm. And we had some data presented at ASCO GU Symposium 2020 looking at different tumor types and histological subtypes. And we tried to evaluate in the genomic level, and for example, patients with urethral cancer. And we have urothelial carcinoma subtype, adenocarcinoma, squamous cell carcinoma, and clear cell. Whether these different subtypes share the same molecular features. And we saw some variability in the genomic mutation findings among the different subtypes. We did see a lot of PI3KCA alterations, especially in patients with urethra cancer, mm -hmm. which raised the question whether we have clinical trials down the road that can be used for those patients with PI3KM TOR inhibitors. If you think about the PI3KM TOR pathway, it appears functionally relevant in bladder cancer too, not only urethra cancer, mm -hmm. and makes, I think, the point of looking at basket and umbrella trials uh, a relevant question because you can enrich your population uh, doing a trial with targeted therapy enriched based on molecular alteration and not based on all comers. We have done work before with also foundation, but also garden looking at circulating tumor DNA. And we look at concordance or lack thereof between tumor tissue and circulating tumor DNA. Mm -hmm. And the data overall pinpoint that we have some similarity between what we saw in our studies with TCGA data in terms of the molecular profile. Uh, and also uh, we find that there is probably not significant difference between the primary tumors and metastatic disease. And the last statement I just made, I think comes also from the ATLAS trial mm -hmm. uh, that we looked through foundation, uh, genomic sequencing of those metastatic tumor tissue samples. And the molecular profiling we did in the ATLAS trial in metastatic tissue samples appears that genomically the disease seems comparable with the molecular landscape you saw in the archival tissues in primary tumors in TCGA. So the question becomes, how do you translate that in future trial designs? And I think we, we have to understand more the biology of and why this mechanism of resistance occur. And maybe these patients who are platinum refractory, maybe PARP inhibitor refractory. That's one hypothesis of the negative ATLAS trial. But we definitely we need to utilize more gener next generation sequencing in our clinical practice and in clinical trials. Mm -hmm.